In this video, we'll be talking about comparing fractions with like numerators and like denominators. In order to do this, we must first explain what a fraction is. So let's look at a fraction. The fraction that we're going to look at is 3 fourths. Now the 3 represents the numerator, which is the top number, which is also the number of parts that we're talking about for this question. The 4 represents the denominator, which is the bottom number, which represents the total parts that it takes to make a whole. To see this illustrated, we can draw a model. So we can have a circle with four parts, and the numerator tells us how many parts should be shaded. 1, 2, and 3. So this fraction, 3 fourths, equals this model of 3 fourths. Each piece is worth 1 fourth. Let's start off by comparing two fractions that have the same denominators. We'll use the fraction 3 fourths again, but this time I want to compare it to 1 fourth. We notice quickly that they both have the same denominators, but they both have two different numerators, which means that they're not equal. Let's look at a model to help us solve this. We're going to draw a bar model with four parts. And we're going to draw another bar model with four parts, since they both have the same denominators. And for the first fraction, 3 fourths, we're going to shade in three parts. And for the second fraction, 1 fourth, we're going to shade in one part. I can quickly look at this and see that the green three-fourths model is much greater than the blue one-fourths model. But just to make sure, we're going to drag it right below so that they're both representing one whole, and we can compare this to one whole. We can easily see again that the green bar model of three-fourths is greater than the blue bar model of one-fourth. Remember, each piece and each bar model is worth one-fourth. So we can quickly see that three-fourths is greater than one-fourth. You should be able to notice a trend or a trick that will help you when comparing fractions with the same denominator. As stated previously, both denominators are equal. So anytime the denominators are equal, it means that they're both made of the same size pieces. So all we have to do is go to the numerator and determine which one is greater, and then we'll know which fraction is greater. In this problem, 3 is greater than 1. So we know that 3 fourths is greater than 1 fourth. Let's look at another example, and let's try to use our shortcut to help us. We have 3 fifths and four fifths. Let's remember our shortcut from the last problem. We quickly notice that both denominators are equal. They both have a five. We know that they both have the same size pieces because their denominators are the same. So now all we have to do are compare the numerators to see which one has the most amount of pieces. And we can see that three is less than four. So we know three fifths is less than four-fifths. Let's use a model to check our work. We get a bar model of fifths, and we'll get another one of fifths. And for the first model, we'll shade in three-fifths. One-fifth, two-fifths, three-fifths. For the second model, we'll shade in four-fifths. One-fifth, two-fifths, three-fifths, and four-fifths. They are very close, but we should be able to see that four-fifths is greater than three-fifths. And it'll be even easier to see if I drag them on top of each other, comparing them to one hole, and see that four-fifths is shaded in closer to a hole than three-fifths. Therefore, we know that three-fifths is less than four-fifths. For this example, we have a word problem, so let's read it. One cake was four-fifths chocolate, and another was four-sixths chocolate. If both cakes were the same size, which one had more chocolate, and why? 
So this is a comparison fraction word problem. And it wants us to identify which one had more chocolate and why. Let's attempt to solve this by pulling both fractions down. We have four-fifths and four-sixths. As I write those fractions, I notice that we have something in common. We don't have denominators that are the same, but we have numerators that are the same. Hmm. Let's get a model to solve. The first fraction is four-fifths, so we need a bar model with five parts. And the second one is four-sixths, so we need a bar model with six parts. For the first fraction of four-fifths, we're going to shade in four-fifths, four parts. One, two, three, four. That's four-fifths. For the second bar model, we're going to shade in four-sixths. One-sixth, two-sixths, three-sixths, four-sixths. Both of these fractions are very similar. Let's drag on top of each other to see which one is greater. Hmm. I can see that four-fifths is closer to a whole than four-sixths. So four-fifths must be greater than four-sixths. Now let's review that our denominators were different, but our numerators are equal. If we notice that our numerators are equal, then all we have to do is compare the denominators. And we know that the smaller the denominator, the bigger the size of a piece. So therefore, the smaller the denominator, the greater the fraction when the numerators are the same. Let's look at another example. Another word problem for this example. A fruit basket contained two-fourths apples and two-eighths oranges. Which fruit made up a larger fraction of the basket? And how do you know? This is another comparison fraction word problem. We are comparing the two-fourths apples and the two-eighths oranges. And we want to know which fruit made up the larger fraction. And how do we know that? So we're going to write both fractions down, two-fourths. And we're going to write two-eighths. Let's try to remember our shortcut from the last problem. We notice that both numerators are equal again, but the denominators are different. Therefore, these fractions cannot be equal. And we know that 4 is smaller than 8, and that the smaller the denominator is, the bigger the piece of the pie. So by using that theory, we should know that 2 fourths is greater than 2 eighths, because 4 is a smaller number than 8, which means its pieces are bigger. Well, let's use a model to make sure we're right. This time we're going to use a circle model. And we're going to do four parts. And we're going to do one with eight parts. For the first model of two-fourths, we're going to shade in two-fourths. And for the second fraction of two-eighths, we're going to shade in two parts to make two-eighths. I can quickly see that two-fourths is greater than two-eighths, so therefore the apples make up a larger fraction of the basket than the oranges. I can also overlap two-eighths on top of two-fourths to see that it only makes up a portion of two-fourths. We know that two-fourths is bigger because they both have the same number of pieces, but the fourths are bigger slices than the eighths. Let's recap what we've learned today. Let's look at two fractions that have the same denominator, 3 eighths and 5 eighths. When we know that the denominators are equal, then we know all we have to do is look to the numerator and compare those numbers. Whichever number is bigger is the bigger fraction. So in this case, 3 is less than 5, so therefore 3 eighths is less than 5 eighths, or 5 eighths is greater than 3 eighths. When we have two fractions that have the same numerator, such as 2 thirds and 2 fifths, we're going to look at this the opposite way. We know that our numerators are equal. So we compare our denominators, and we know that the smaller the denominator is, the bigger size of the piece. So therefore, the smaller denominator would determine 
the greater fraction. So in this situation, 3 is smaller than 5, so 2 thirds is greater than 2 fifths. Thank you for watching, and I hope this video helps you complete your activities. Good luck.